97. Which of the following molecules and ions contain polar bonds? And which of these molecules and ions have a dipole moment? And then we have pH2 negative. Okay, so I see the negative up top here. So that means that we're in ion territory. Molecules are the covalent compounds that don't have a charge. But still, we have to figure out if this ion has polar bonds and if it has a dipole moment. Now, we'll start off with the polar bonds. Now, secretly, right, I mean, not secretly, but they're asking you for bonds. But if I'm looking at pH2 minus, do you see any bonds? I don't see any bonds. So the first thing I have to do is I just have to write the bonds. It just makes it so much easier. Just draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but I promise you, by drawing the Lewis structures, you will unlock a lot of answers to the questions that they ask, especially in this section. So there's tons of videos on the chapter just teaching you how to draw the Lewis structure. We go step by step. So if you do need more assistance, you could always check those videos out. This one will kind of be like a quick inversion. So you could always pause the video, write down your Lewis structure, and then see if your answer matches mine. So here we go. Hydrogen, never in the middle. So I know that phosphorus has got to be in the middle. I'll put my two hydrogens around it. And that looks pretty good to me. Uh, each hydrogen can only have a single bond. So that's good to go. We have to give the uh, phosphorus two lone pairs to get the um, octet rule. And now we're good. So I'll just bracket it off and I'll put that negative charge up top. Done. Now let's figure out if there's polar bonds. Now, if we're talking about the bonds, all you're doing is you're just looking at a individual bond between the two elements. There's two bonds here, but for each one of them, it's an HP bond and then an HP bond. So it doesn't matter which one you look at. I guess I'll take, it doesn't really matter who you say first. So I'll say, okay, we're gonna do HP. Now, if you have polar bonds, just know that when you subtract those electronegativities, keep in mind that a difference just means subtraction. So if you know those electronegativity values, you could subtract them and you should be in the realm of 0.4 to 1.8. Now on my electronegativity chart, I do have hydrogen coming in as a uh, 2.1 electronegativity and the phosphorus is also coming at 2.1. So when you subtract these two numbers, 2.1 minus 2.1, you get zero. Does that make the cut? No, we are not here. We are lower than 0.4. So this is not polar bond. This is nonpolar. Nonpolar means that it's completely symmetrical. It's Everybody's sharing nicely. As much as hydrogen shares the electrons, phosphorus shares the electrons as well. So in this case, we know that we do not have polar bonds. We instead have nonpolar bonds. But now, let's see if we have a dipole moment. Well, a dipole moment only comes from a polar molecule or a polar ion. In this case, we will say that it's an ion because I'm dealing with the negative. So when you're dealing with dipole moments, you now have to look at the ion as a whole and not just the individual bonds that it has because sometimes you may have nonpolar bonds but still be polar. And then on the flip side, you might have polar bonds but you might be nonpolar. Now this is where the acronym SNAP comes in, S-N-A-P. Now, since we want to know that we have a polar ion, I'm just going to key in on the ending because polar ions always are asymmetrical. But there's one other piece of the puzzle that I love to add because it's, it's like a cool little trick. Anytime that your central atom has lone electrons, I don't care if you have one pair, two pairs, three pairs in the center, if your center has lone pairs, you are automatically going to be polar. So I don't have to look any further. I see that this phosphorus has two lone pairs and one is good enough. So as soon as you see that you have those lone pairs, you are a polar ion in this case. And if you are polar, you have a dipole moment. And here's a great example 
of having nonpolar bonds, right? If they're if you're not polar, you are nonpolar. So you have nonpolar bonds, but the molecule or the ion as a whole is polar because of those lone electrons. And that is the story, my friends. I hope this helped you out. Thank you for viewing the video. Love talking to you guys. Love putting these videos out there for you guys. You guys have been so kind in the comments. Um, and it's just been just been fun, this whole journey. So I'm so glad my brother and I, we can help you out. And yeah, keep rocking and rolling. Keep studying and always keep learning. Okay? And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.